Hello everyone, we're going to check out a new AI video creation technique that enables us to enhance video diffusion generated results. It's called Spatiotemporal Skip Guidance, STG for short. It's basically another form of sampling method, different from CFG sampling. Now we've checked out some examples here where you can see CFG sampling and STG side by side. What you're seeing right now with the spatial temporal guidance, it's more clear in the STG examples. You see some smoke coming with different colors of the than the middle of the character. You see there's a more clear difference when using Mochi1 with CFG and without CFG, that is using the STG examples. Now here we're seeing some other examples here where this is, you know, a futuristic floating island in the air and you see it's more clear in the bottom video examples that are using STG. Now here you see it feels like it enhances the videos already from the generic result. But of course, this isn't magic. This is just using STG as a sampling method. And right here we have another animated style example where you're showing the CFG and then the STG. It's kind of a lot different when you compare the quality and the video clearness of each element. All the objects are more coherent and able to improve. And this even runs on a local AI video model and is able to do that as well. And in this video, I'm going to check it out. How can we use that in the simplest way in Comfy UI? And as you can see, even in stable diffusion, the good old video models are also able to apply this technique. And like, for example, this tiger video, as you can see, when it's using the default settings of SVD sampling with CFG, it's not able to see a clear face of the tiger, and then it starts morphing like usual, what we see in SVD, whereas we're seeing STG performing way better. You see the monkey and the bird are able to retain their features even in the three second animations. So in this video, I'm going to use another AI video model, which is the most convenient way in Comfy UI. It's built in in Comfy UI custom nodes. It's the LTX video model. And as we've talked about in previous videos, LTX is very lightweight, fast, and enables us to run it locally on our computers. And all these are able to run in Comfy UI with the STG technique. Now previously I had the LTX video comfy UI tutorial and I applied another advanced, well, kind of like a mashup of all the features of text to image and image to video and image to video into this workflow. And I've updated this workflow using the STG method and I have it right here. To improve the quality of the videos in the generated results, we're able to do more video enhancement. For example, I have image to video and also as well as text to video with STG. And we're going to compare, of course, the most traditional CFG image to video method as well. This is from the previous versions of this workflow where it's using just a very typical image to video setup. But then, of course, I did a little more control for having different image sources from your input folder or your system file path. And then you can pass that to resize the image and just compile it in a very fast way using the LTX video model. So right here, we have, first of all, let's try out the one using text to video without STG, and you'll see the difference. And right here, I can just enable this group where you can see this is the text to video with STG. Now, what's the difference here? And I have quoted this note that's coming from the LTX Tricks custom nodes. Now, we've talked about these custom nodes before. You guys can check them out. Download this one if you don't have it. You need this in order to run the LTX more advanced features. Now, what are the differences between the normal text-to-video and the STG-enabled workflow? We need these three custom nodes for the LTX model's data. We pass that to the modified LTX model that's also coming from the LTX Tricks custom node and the LTX Add Attention Override. This one is going to allow you to put the override numbers here. So, for example, the best range of this one is going to be between 8 and 14. So yeah, we can try 14, that's like the max best range using the override attentions and this LTX applied tensions. This is going to use STG, which is going to override the CFG from the workflow pipeline. And here it's mentioned that the layer of the best is 14. And of course we set that already in the attention override. And then we have the scale value between one and two. And then the CFG must be larger than one if you still want to use the CFG in Comfy UI custom nodes. But then we're going to override that. So so it won't make that much difference for this custom node setting. And right here we'll be using the model connections from the LTX models. Pass that to the purple dot right here. We've got the connections. 
So what we're going to do is inject this new guidance method in between the model's data. This allows the model data to be affected by the STG guidance method, which is going to override the CFG. So we're going to generate one time and see how that works. So I'm going to show one using STG, and then I will remove this part and see how that looks with the same text prompt for everything. So the generated result is a far shot of a woman standing on top of a building, like, you know, doing some dance motions here. And this is using STG. Now, as you can see, although it's pretty low quality, we can't see the clear face because it's a far shot of the character. And also LTX isn't able to produce some high quality results like, you know, a commercialized AI video model, but that's fine. We just want to get a preview of that. So we'll keep this video here and we'll be using another one that's going to generate without STG. And right here, what we're going to do is we just directly connect the model's data to the sampler nodes without connecting the LTX model. And then the attention override and also the attention settings nodes that should be in this area. So I put that on top of this video result. So you guys will understand this is used for overriding the STG. So let's click generate again and you'll see what happens here. I'm using the models directly connected using CFG, and this doesn't look good. It doesn't even follow what I want in the prompt. And let's try if there's something better. So here's the generic result without STG where you see the character is coherent and isn't able to remain too much. You see all this part isn't able to present us, you know, a human character actually dancing on the rooftop. But then when you see this generated result previously that I'm using the LTX attention override, and then we got the modified models it's able to show the character actually moving and posing with different poses, looking like it's in a dancing scene, although this isn't in the same seed numbers. And I can try again using these same seed numbers with the one that uses for override attentions, the override for using STG. And I'm going to remove this node, connecting back to these STG nodes, and you'll see how that looks like. So here we got two results with the same seed numbers for text to video, and let's drag that one out as well. And as you can see, both of them are far shots because my text prompt is a far shot of camera panning. And this one, obviously the backgrounds, the whole picture of this one. If there's no this kind of weird logo, we can see the buildings. Every structure of that is doing pretty well. But of course, AI video models sometimes don't understand much about the physics of the real world. And the lady is, you know, standing on top of the fence. But you see the overall structures of the backgrounds. And then the character movement, this is able to enhance the video generated result using STG, where this is another method of using for detailed generations of animation videos. And as you can see, they have some testing result reports of Mochi, Open Sora, and SVD. Not a lot of improvement. Like, it won't go like 100% improvement. That is, if somebody tells you that something can improve 100% or double the existing data, then they're lying to you. But in reality, if there's a slight improvement of 10 to 20% of the existing model, then that is more real. The data will become more like real data or more trustworthy data. Rather than someone telling you that, you know, their new AI enhanced method or new AI models are 100% better than other existing model data, or they claim they're the best of something something. Yeah, so again, a little bit of enhancement, but every detailed aspect of ratios of all the buildings, etc. All objects are improving better. And this is more obvious when we're testing for image to video, because for text to video, sometimes it just purely relies on the AI models to generate whatever results they are. So coming back to here, we drag this to custom nodes back to the groups and we're going to test the image to video. So right here we have the, now here's the better example where we have the image to video. Now you'll see the difference between this and what we're running now. Here's the generated result without STG, just using the normal way CFG and using the LTX image to video nodes and passing the conditioning, then the latent data of the image to generate as the video. And as you can see, this is the result. Well, I will generate another one, which is using the LTX with STG image to video groups, where this way of using the STG attention method, it's slightly a little bit different between what we saw in the image to video and we'll enable that later back again. So for the STG attentions guidance method, we'll be using the image, not from the image to videos note. Note that we saw here in the LTX image to videos, Rather than that, we're using the LTX applied 
per tube attentions method and then the attentions override in the model's data. So we're going to inject the image latent into this pipeline rather than using the normal CFG way and using the conditioning, injecting the image to videos in the yellow pipeline here. So in here, we're using the LTX trick and other nodes called add LTX latent guide. This is able to guide whichever image latent you want to inject into the whole range of indices in the video frames. So for example, if you have hundreds of frames, then you're starting with zero here. So number zero is going to be the start frame of this, you know, 100 frames of five or four second videos. If you're using, you know, 50 here, then the index 50 from 100 frames means this image latent is going to be injected in the middle of the video. When it hits the 50th index of the image frames, then we're going to see how that works. Right now, we're starting from zero. That means we're starting from the base of this image and passing that to the overall image to video workflow. So from here, I'm going to use the same image here for the loading image, and then we're not going to use the path image. And everything is done the same way, except we're using multiple prompts combined together using the CR combine prompt adding. What we need to do is use Florence 2 to add the image to captioning. Then we use the captioning for our first group of text prompts here. Then we're just basically ready to go with 121 frames. That means about five seconds for LTX videos a very normal standard length video length for the videos and we'll see what happened between this result and combine with the previous one in the traditional method of image to videos in this group and right here we got our generic result here well the hands everything's movement is better than what we have in the normal way of using image to videos as you can see both comparisons both are raising up the hands and then you know these little movement motions here but then you see the right side of the generic result where we're using STG and it's able to improve a little bit for the overall arms without less morphing right between here where we're using the normal image to videos generated result and then the face starts morphing as well if we don't apply STG, just using the CFG. Although right here, because, well, this AI video model isn't really in high quality or has a large size of parameters. Therefore, we're only able to produce like a five-second video like this only in local comfy UI. But then this way is already better than what we saw in the one that uses CFG, where it is, you know, you see it starts from these first seconds. You can see it starts morphing already. Even if I use a two second video result in the CFG generation method, the face and the arms, everything starts to morph. But in here, when I'm using the STG generation method, even if I'm generating a five second video, it's still okay in the first beginning of two seconds. And then the third second is fine as well. But just in the last seconds where it is, you know, turning around here, you see it's not quite clear, but then that's the problem of the LTX videos, which is not enough parameter size or the context windows aren't large enough to render the large, the last part of the video here. But in the middle of the actions of the character, it's still moving. Okay, for that, where we see only two seconds of video in a normal CFG image to video, it's not able to create a good one. So this is the, well, a little improvement, I can say, not a good, quite large improvement of your AI video generated result in LTX, but then it's still better than nothing. And also you can apply that using frame interpolations. From here, we're gonna disable the image to videos and start the frame interpolation. We can use a start frame and end frame to do a few seconds of image to video scenes where again we apply the same concept using the add LTX latent guide to insert the image latent image in the model's data and then the latent data and put that into one of the indices of the image frames where we have the last frames. It is the minus one which represents the last frame of the image in this video. So let's try one time and we'll see how that goes. We will have a lady in a close-up shot and then the camera will change transitions where the lady puts up her hands like, you know, the modeling style of motions. Hopefully there's something we can have rendered smoothly without morphing or etc. like that. But the LTX video sometimes isn't performing that good. We have to do some gambling in the seed numbers where I'm mostly using LTX. Gotta be using the random seed numbers for trying out with different seeds to generate different results. And you know... 10 out of 2 will be getting a good result in LTX. Like for example, this one is not good because it's not about the image structure. It's about the seed numbers that can't render something good here. So I'll try a few more times and pick a good result to see how STG is applied here. And we got a better result here. 
because I have to call Florence 2 again for the start frames, I am able to add more text prompts, more details to the text prompt. So in order to do that, the LTX is able to perform a little bit better. And we have this result. It looks pretty cool. A different shot of the lady on the rooftop. Whatever she's doing, she's smiling like in an Instagram post. So that's how we can apply using the LTX latent, the LTX attentions override using STG, and then we're able to produce better quality, overcoming how the LTX is getting a lot of morphing in the old way of using CFG. And we did a little improvement using that to have better image to video generated results, and also using the frame interpolations, start frame, end frame, and we combine it two for one video animations. Yep, so that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.